guys, it's K3 here, and I'm uh, gonna be doing some Minecraft for ya. I've created something that I haven't really seen too much of, and uh, I thought I'd show it to you guys. Uh, if you've watched my vlog, then you know that I'm planning on doing something that's a secret still. But, uh, consider this a hint. So anyway, just tossed a rose into, uh, there, and you hear a piston clock going with that torch flickering. So, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, it's still on. Uh, that's a problem. Try tossing a melon in there. So, the magical torch does not approve, perhaps ahead of my enemies. Oh, it appears that that has worked. Behold, the pile of circuitry behind it. It's actually a lot simpler than it looks. Uh, and I will explain that on this broken down model over here. This is stage one. It starts with you just dropping an item into uh, the water. And it'll flow through, drop a dis object out of the dispenser. And because it's the object you wanted, pulse only got sent through this one. Now let's say it's an object you don't want. Well, and then it'll hit that one. I have the usual little thing, and it'll just float right on by and trigger that plate. So, objects you want will get stacked and will only trigger the first plate. Objects you don't want won't get stacked and will trigger both plates. Using that, you can then create a latch. Now, this latch is really simple. If only the first blue line is triggered, then this latch will be in the on position. If the green one, however, is triggered from having a wrong item, then the latch will get shut off. So, because of now with this knowledge, you now know that you have a system that can identify the item. But, there's a delay between when it hits the blue and the green. So you need to make sure that any output effects don't occur until the slatch has been on long enough for the output to, basically for the item to get all the way through past the blue into the green. And you can accomplish this with a long duration timing circuit. The easiest, most efficient way to do this is to just put another dispenser, in this case, fill it with anything you want, uh, I just use dirt because it, it's dirt. Um, so anyway, you have the output of the latch, feed it straight into it, and then when the latch, ever the latch gets turned on, it'll drop a single block. Now, you can like, make this as long or short as you want, just make sure that it's long enough that the time it takes an object to flow through this entire system is shorter than the time it takes for this latch for this timing circuit to complete. Because you need to have access to this pulse. So then if you continue onward, you'll see uh, that we have another output coming from the latch, as well as the output of the time circuit. And that's going to go into an AND gate. Um, an AND gate's really simple. It's just both outputs have to be on in order to get a signal. So let's say that the latch is on for because you have an object that you want to keep. So it's stacked, it never hits second plate. Therefore, when the pulse from the time circuit comes, it will trigger the AND gate, which will then feeds into this another latch. Now this latch uh, is pretty, it's identical to the one over there, um, except this is your actual output. Because when this latch gets triggered, It'll only happen if that line 
Uh, if if the item ever reached this green block, then this will be off by the time this pulse comes, assuming you made the timing circuit correctly. So, uh, in if you look, the latch does not get triggered. But then, uh, if you have the correct item, then it will be triggered. Now, this is your actual output, but you don't want someone throwing something else in while you the system's running, because this is not a multitasking system, unfortunately. Uh, so, you need to have a U a, a really basic UI. In this case, a flashing flashing torch telling the person whether it's busy. So you for this you're going to need an out the output of the first latch and the output of the second latch. Whenever the output of the first latch is in the on position, you'll have a timing circuit. I mean you'll have a clock going that will tell you that the machine is working in the event that it's alright. So in the event that this latch is turned off, uh, then the clock will stop because there's no power going to it. But, let's say that you're right. Then you don't want to have the clock running too, which is why you have the output of the second latch. If the second output is turned on, then it will feed backwards into the clock, shutting, permanently shutting it off. And then you have this output to your single torch, which will be the UI. And that is how you can make an item detector. Well, an item detector lock. In this case, I used it to lock a door to the outside. It's a really simple piston door. And that's what the black circuit is. That's why I'm not explaining it. Um, so, with that, uh, you can consider this as a hint for, uh, like I said earlier, for what's to come. Uh, you might be able to figure out what it is based on the other contraptions you see. But until then, thanks for watching.